Now, while we still have this information up here, let's do a sample problem. I'm going to give you the measure of one of these angles, and I'm going to let you tell me what the rest of them are. Okay? So, I'm going to put up here somewhere where we can see it. Given measure angle 1 equals... Well, let's just measure it and see what it equals. Looks pretty good. 110 degrees. So if I say the measure of angle 1 equals 110 degrees, so this right here is 110 degrees. Now, let's see what else we can get a hold of and see what happens here. Measure of angle 1. What else is angle 1 congruent? We know because of corresponding angles, that angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent. Well, if angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent, why does that make angle 5? That's right. This is 110 degrees. Okay? Now, what do we know just by looking at this about angle 1 and angle 3? They're vertical angles, aren't they? Vertical angles of intersecting lines are what? They're congruent. So this has to be 110. Well, what does that mean about angle 7? Angle 5 and 7 are vertical lines, aren't they? Well, if angle 5 and 7 are vertical lines, guess what? That means this is 110 degrees. Okay? Now let's see what else we can do. Alternate interior angles of parallel lines are congruent. Oh, so we could have done that 1 and 7 and 2 and 8. So 1 and 7 and 2 and 8. Alternate interior pairs, 3 and 5. So we could get it there. We could have done it there, either by vertical angles or by alternate interior pairs. Okay? Now let's see what else we can get. Um, what do we know about same side interior angles of parallel lines or supplementary? So 4 and 5, the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. Well, let's go down here, 180. Well, what do we do here? Let's do this correctly. We know that measure of angle 4 and 5, so we know that 110 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180. So how do we solve that? Subtract 110 degrees, 110 degrees. This goes away. We're left with a measure of angle 4 equals 70 degrees. Okay? And once we know that, we're pretty well set on free. Angle 4. So this is 70 degrees. Well, this is a linear pair, isn't it? So that does that work? Okay? Alternate interior angles. What do we know? Alternate interior angles are congruent. So 4 and 6 are congruent. So 4 and 6 are congruent. That means this is also 70 degrees. Okay? Oh, corresponding pairs. Corresponding pairs. 4 and 8 are corresponding pairs. What do we know about corresponding pairs? They're congruent. If they're congruent, their measures are equal. So therefore, angle 8 is 70 degrees. What do we know about these corresponding pairs? 2 and 6. They're congruent, therefore their measures are equal. Okay. It's a real simple problem. Given the angle, one angle, of a situation where a transversal is intersecting two parallel lines, can you give me all the other seven angles? Yes, you can. That'd make a nice little quiz, wouldn't it? Heads up. Now we're going to take the information that we've been given. We're going to use it to solve a couple of sample problems. They're not tremendously difficult, but they'll give you an idea of the kinds of things we can do with this in order to solve problems. The first one is a classical little puzzle. And we have two parallel lines. It's cut by actually two transversals. And we're asked to find angle 1. Okay? 
you're supposed to find measure angle 1. Given that this angle right here is 25 degrees and this angle right there is 45. Now, there's a little trick to this one, so let's do it. And what we're going to do is we're going to construct what's called an auxiliary line that will help us understand how to do this problem. And that auxiliary line is going to be a parallel, a line that's parallel. These symbol means that those two lines are parallel. And we're simply going to construct an auxiliary line right through, it's not the middle of angle 1, but we're going to construct an, an auxiliary line that is parallel to these other two lines. And it's going to help us out. Okay, let's put our indication here that this is a parallel line, so we know that. Now, let's look at these and determine what our relationships are. Now, corresponding angles. We have this set of parallel lines, this green one and this black one up here. This angle and this angle are what kind of angles? They're corresponding angles. What do we know about the corresponding angles of parallel lines? Corresponding angles of parallel lines are congruent. What does that mean about their measures? That means their measures are congruent. So what do we know about this angle right here? That means that that is 45 degrees. Okay? All right? Well, let's look at this bottom set. Forget about the top. Let's look at the bottom set. We've got this angle here and this angle here. The one inside here. We have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. What is the relationship of this angle right here and this angle? What relationship do they have? Opposite sides inside. Opposite non-adjacent on the inside. They are alternate interior. What do we know about alternate interior angles? They're congruent. So that means that this angle right here is 25 degrees. What tells us that we can add this 45 degrees and this 25 degrees together to get one? Angle addition postulate says, wow, if I have two angles, I can add them together to get the measure of their composition. So I add those together, 45 degrees plus 25 degrees equals, what is that, is that 70 degrees? Please make sure I'm right. Okay, so that's a way to find that one. Okay, draw an auxiliary line that helps us determine what these angle pairs are. Okay, and then find those. Now, let's go over here and look at another situation. We have another two parallel lines cut by a transversal creating angle relationships. Now, we're to find, they want us to find X and Y. Great. <laughs> Great. I got three sets of equations and two unknowns, so I have plenty of information. I just got to figure out how to put it together. Now, to give you a little hint, go for the angles that have the same variable. So what two angles have the same variable? These two angles right here have y as their variable. Okay? So go with those and solve those first. Now, look at these two. What is their relationship between them? They're on the inside of the two parallel lines. They're on the same side of the transversal. Same side inside angles of parallel lines. What do we know about those? Look at your chart. Same side interior angles of parallel lines are what? Supplementary. So what can we do with these two? You got it. Add them together and set them equal to, what did that say? 
We're going to be adding things together and setting them equal to 180. Or are you going to be making them congruent? All right, combine like terms. I've got 8 and I've got 25. What is that? 8 plus 25 is what? 33 plus. Whoa, that's not going to be a plus, is it? Plus 2 and then negative 20. Minus 18 equals 180. Great. 33y, well, what are we going to do next? We're going to add 18, right? Plus 18. Okay, what do we get? 33y equals 198. All right, now what do we do? We're going to do what? Divide by 33. Well, what do you get? Y'all got the calculators. What do you get? And divide by 33. Y equals, I think it's 6. So, Y equals 6. Great. So, what can we do now? We know what Y is, so we can just plug it in right here. 8 times 6 plus 2 equals 48 plus 2 is 50. Okay. Alright. What's this angle right here? 25 times 6 minus 20. 25 times 6 is what? I think it's 150 minus 20 equals 130. Okay? Now which one of these two do we want to use? We want to use this one or do we want to use this one? Because this one right here equals 130. Okay, so do we want to use this angle or we want to use this angle? If we do this one, we've got to do some more arithmetic because this is a linear pair. We've got to add them up and get them. Of course, you can do that in your head. This one and this one, they're alternate what? Alternate interior angles. What do we know about the alternate interior angles? Parallel lines. They are congruent. So what do we know this angle equals? This angle equals the same thing as this angle, which is 130. So we can come down over here and go 10x equals 130. Divide by 10, divide by 10, x equals what? 13. Okay? Sample problems on how to use these relationships in order to find and solve equations and solve expressions. Okay? Like I said, geometry is simply algebra with pictures. Understand the relationships that the pictures show you, set up the algebraic expressions and the algebraic equations, and then solve them.